Yeah, time now to update you on the regional four-day championship here in the West Indies. The seventh and final round seems to be heading in the direction of producing wins in each match as they too ended a short while ago across the various venues. Tied to chasers and current leaders, Leeward Islands Hurricanes have control over the Winwood Islands Volcanoes, two title contenders there in their clash at Queen's Park Oval in Trinidad and Tobago. Now starting the day on six without loss in reply to the Leeward Islands 300 in their first innings, the Volcanoes were dismissed for 179 with Daniel Dorham grabbing six for 34. Johan Jeremiah top scored with 41. The Hurricanes then ended the day on 111 for two, batting a second time with first inning Centurion. Mikhail Louis so far top scoring with 33. Kavim Hanj and Shamar Springer both have one for 23 as the Hurricanes lead by 232 runs. They are very much in control of that match. And the way things are going at the moment, they may well be the ones lifting the trophy at the end of this week. Another title chasing team, Guyana Harpy Eagles, are slightly behind in their match against combined campuses and colleges after a massive first inning slump to be dismissed for 223 in reply to CCC's 200. This is at the Sir Frank Warrell Memorial Ground in St. Augustine. Raymond Perez led with 62, but it was 8 for 51 from Ospina Avinash. Mahabring Singh that rocked the Harpy Eagles who started the day on 114 for one. Now batting a second time combined campuses and colleges were 165 for seven at stumps with the day in Makati top scoring with 56 against two for 29 from Kevin Sinclair. Now they lead by 142 runs. Um, the combined campuses and colleges. I guess you would say the guy in the Harpy Eagles at this stage in control of that match with the upper hand. Let's update you now on the other two matches. Barbados Pride, yes, yeah, still in tight contention, but they will rely heavily on skipper Craig Brathwaite to produce a big score if they are to turn around their position against the West Indies Academy at Coolidge Cricket Ground in Antigua and Barbuda. Brathwaite is not out on 49 as the Pride ended the day on 109 for three in their second innings. An overall lead of 19 runs early in the day. West Indies Academy were dismissed for 243 in their first innings, replying to Barbados' first innings 153. Akeem Ogeast top scored with 76 against Akeem Jordan's 4 4 76. And finally, at Sabina Park, no title contenders here. Jamaica Scorpions are in a spot of bother. What's new? They are taking on the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force. The Red Force resuming on 308 for seven in their first innings, posted 432. Terence Hines added 79 to Joshua De Silva's century, while Javor Royal was the best of the Scorpions bowlers with three for 113 at stumps. The Scorpions were 159 for nine, and in danger of following on, they still trail by all of 273 runs. Look at that, Kurt McKenzie with 57, finally getting by the half century mark this campaign. Javor Royal, 33, Brian Charles has so far taken six for 75. Doesn't seem to matter who is boarding against the Scorpions this season. But we're talking about the title contenders and Lance and Mariah, the Leeward Islands Hurricanes, are in a very good position to go on and win. And we suspect that if they do that against the Win on Islands Volcanoes, then, then they, they will be lifting the title. Wow. Yeah, a bit of a struggle here for the Volcanoes who had played so well for long periods in, in the championship, but um, stuttering here in this all important uh, seventh and final round. But um, good to see some overall strong performances throughout the tournament with a good performance to see Joshua Bishop who bowls uh, left arm spin for the West Indies Academy. I think he's the leading wicket taker in the tournament at the moment. Got a couple of wickets again today and um, some strong performances coming from, from Winward's, uh, the West Indies Academy players. And, um, but I agree with you though, the Leeward's Hurricanes have been steady throughout and um, putting in a strong 
effort here at the back end of the season to see if they can win the title. Yeah, and if they go on to win, I would say it's a well-deserved win for the Lee Wards. Um, Lance, you pointed out a couple of the single performances, and that has been my overall takeaway from this uh, entire regional 40 competition. We've spoken for quite some time, and, and I brought this point up yesterday, but I feel like it's necessary that I mention it again. Uh, we've always spoken about consistency. Uh, we're getting that from a couple of the players, and it's a good sign as we continue to move forward because uh, as one set of West Indies players go, we want to make sure that we have some good contenders for those spots. So I think that's my takeaway from this regional 40. Yeah, you know, Lance asked the question some time ago of Nikhil Utam Shandani about the Leewards and the Windwards, whether they could go on and win the title and look at where we are now. Yeah. yeah. Both of them very much in the hunt. Barbados stuttering, although they started with an opportunity to win. Jamaica. Guyana Harpy Eagles are in there as well because they will likely go on, well, they may go on to win that game against the combined campuses and colleges. What a finish to the regional four-day season. Yeah, let's see how it all unfolds over the next two days. Let's take a break. Interactive to close the show after this. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.